where's everybody going? Uh, it's funny because uh, my son, you know, I'm always complaining about the sun in the face. Well, uh, my son was like, why don't you just wear a hat? I did not think of this. My 11 year old thought of this. Yes. Anyways, the Punisher with the camo took me a lot of years to uh, accept doing the camos after doing the camo, if you know what I mean. Anyway, <clears throat> so yesterday I was fortunate enough to have a, a special guest so I'm bringing you a special Saturday edition. Um, it's, it speaks for itself. Uh, he's such a good guy, funny guy, family man. Um, but yeah, we're gonna break it down because uh, him and I, you know, like anybody that you grew up with, uh, the comfortability and the vibe was just really good. So we got to talking. It happens, all right? It was it was a little a little long, but I'm gonna maybe show you a little bit of it now. And if I don't get it all in this video, we're gonna break it down into two parts. Um, but he has great perspectives and uh, just a good story to tell, you know? A good reminder to all of us to be be ourselves to not give up the fight and you know to always just keep on striving so we're gonna we're gonna get to that and um before i forget even though i shouted out in the video i want to wish uh the kiddo's mom a happy birthday and uh my special guest mom laura happy birthday i hope uh i hope you guys have a great day uh but yeah we're gonna get to the video and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, oh, yeah, some of the some of the languages, some of the languages might not be safe for work. So uh, you might just want to watch and keep the volume down if you're at work. So all right, I hope you guys enjoy it. Have a have a great 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 Saturday. This here this here is Brandon. All right. I bet you guys thought it was Marky Tutos, didn't you? No, no, no. You ain't never gonna see that jack off. All right. So anyway, this here is Brandon. This is uh, this is my brother from another mother. We grew up together. He's like the big brother I never had, and sometimes never wanted. And that's like 952 figure four leg locks later. But anyway, this that's the gospel truth. I. My knees still don't act right because of it. It's all your fault. Neither does my mom. Ask, ask her about the wash bowl, man. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> we won't even get into talking about her right now because she'll probably light us up. Yep. It's, like it's going to happen. Definitely. How you doing, Brandon? Doing real, brother. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, good. Same old stuff, you know? Yeah. But now I do yeah. this. And it's uh, morning inspirationals, and it's, what, 7.30, 8 o'clock at hey. night? They got it. It still looks like morning, though. To Some of the videos just, I've done, huh? We're just missing the sun. It's true. It's all right. We got this thing. Yeah. <laughs> we got this thing. That stuff's. <laughs> the stuff's is there. Oh, and I hope you guys enjoy my sign. This is adage to when I used to be a full fledged drinker. Now I'm just in recoveries. So. Yeah. We're going to replace that with uh, the porch. Yeah. Some kind of neon. Oh, like a, like an old bar lamp. Yeah, yeah, just plain, real plain, just the porch. Yep. Go, or or the guy. <laughs> the guy. The guy on the porch. <laughs> we could do it. I'm excited. It's Thank production you. value, you know? So, should I tell them a little why I brought you here? Other than your good looks and your charming personality? <laughs> That's definitely not it. That is absolutely <laughs> it. Come on. Thanks, Dave. Ah, uh, you're welcome, honey. <laughs> Anywho, so you guys know, I reached out, and every single day is about the same thing for me. 
more than anything, I want you guys to know, life can be, there's a duck. Where's a, good? a duck. I cannot win. Every duck hunt. Oh, from the Nintendo. Huh? <laughs> you guys remember duck hunt. With now, the real question is, how many of you assholes went up to the screen with the gun and didn't even stand back and do it? You pointed it right at the screen. You know what I'm talking about. I didn't even say it. I just shot the dog. <laughs> Little bastards always laughing at us. <laughs> anyway, you were saying. No, you're good. It's like the form of torment. <laughs> you're getting ridiculed before you even know what ridicule is. Right, right. But anyway, listen. Oh, we're getting already. Be prepared. Be prepared. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, I like to reach out to you guys and it's one thing every single day for me to sit there and tell you about Bidu Bidu and complain about my trains. And it's another thing for me to bring something to you that has actually inspired me. Inspirationals are hard to come by. Um, Brandon really has been like the big brother I never had. And, you know... He's always been one of those people in my life that from afar has has looked out for me, okay? But not just a couple of short years ago, what, 2015, right? Yeah. Brandon <clears throat> was diagnosed with a form of what, lymphoma? Yeah, not Hodgkin's, not Hodgkin's, but just a uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma. D uh, DLBCL is what they called it. Okay. Um, but I, I had I had a funny rare form of it, man. Um, I get, I don't know. I gotta get a drink. You got your mug full? Uh, I do got my mug. Let me get one. <coughs> that's funny because that's where I'm at right now. Facebook jail inmate what does it say repeat repeat offender <coughs> repeat offender i'm banned every month i spend what what was i on now about a week i think my record was last month i actually made it for three and a half weeks before i got banned again but this one you know but it's funny because this came in the mail yesterday i don't know who sent it to me but it's obviously somebody who knows i don't spend a lot of time on facebook that's what would have happened to me if I wouldn't have uh, conformed to America's Funniest Videos rules. And you know what? Before we go too far, I brought you gifts. Just a couple things. I, I know you like this stuff. I need that out of the bag. And this, that's 87 octane. Don't just put that away, dude. You don't know how important that is right now. It's, oh. That'll get your lawnmower at least started. In case of a shortage of gas. Not saying anything, but... I mean... I, I bought you some gas. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you love that stuff. You, you're a kid. No, anyway. So... <clears throat> uh, just random shit in my book bag. Nope, nope, it's okay. So if anybody is wondering... <laughs> <laughs> what the gifts were. Obviously, you don't like it? <laughs> That's 87 octane, bro. Obviously, that is... That's important. Gasolina. Nobody knows where you live, right? Like. No. Don't come for that shit. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> my pride and joy. Um, he brought me some cornbread classic stuffing. Just mix it with water. It's good. I will not go hungry. <laughs> Feed it to the birds. Feed it to the groundhogs. Oh, come on, man. Feed it to the groundhogs. See this guy already with the groundhog. What you guys did not see, and I do not care because I am going to tell it, and PETA, if you're watching or whatever they're called, what is it? I don't know, but you shot him right in his ass. <laughs> yeah. I told you guys I was going to wage a war. Brandon got to see firsthand. I missed. I don't have the military expertise to shoot a gun. I missed him by at least 20 inches. I, on the other hand, backflips. <laughs> I, on the other hand, <laughs> mm, I was, <laughs> it was like Rambo. I was like John Rambo. I was, it was, it was that serious. I was like, hey, yo. And then I shot him <laughs> right in his ass. <laughs> he, 
he flipped up. Yeah. It's, like, it's like he jumped up like an old western. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, like the... Shot him right the butt. Boom. And he ran. That was funny. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> so I have stuffing for days. Stuffing for days. Oh, and we have to cheers then. You know, I'm yeah. saying a little more, a little less judgment. You're it's, like, it's weird. We both got coffee mugs, and you're drinking like vitamin water, and I got some locally made Swiss Wangers iced tea. Shameless plug. <laughs> Good shit. <laughs> Cha -ching. Cheers. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not drinking Joe at <laughs> seven o'clock at night. That is, but that is vitamin water. I'm, I'm a fan. I do like vitamin. Water. Like vitamin water, triple X. Don't keep this up here. You'll end up drinking it. I maybe, well, so maybe I, five I'm, months ago. I'm, I'm not shitting you. Just a gross story to entertain everybody out there. When I used to drive for my job, I had to go to Allentown one day, and the traffic was terrible going up. I had the kids, so I had two Swiss tea bottles in my car with in the truck with me. One was my tea. One. Practically empty. It was. Empty. So I peed in the bottle. <laughs> that was back 20 minutes later. I needed a drink. I just reached down, grabbed the bottle, twisted it open. Dude, that first sip was warm and salty, and I fucking puked my guts out. So don't ever pee in a tea bottle and keep it next to your tea. And move. That's why I moved the gasoline. I didn't want you to. I get that. But hey, you could filter your urine at least 40 times and survive drinking it. Just so you know. I think you might have learned that in your days. And if you get lost out there, you can filter your piss and have a chug. That is very, very true. I did learn this, but I have to tell you, I would have rather died of starvation. <laughs> uh, so I would have rather yes. not drank that, sir. <laughs> Purely accidental, just distracted by the drive. But anyway, we're getting off topic. No, it is okay. <laughs> so for all of you folk out there, we have established that I can shoot a groundhog's ass. <laughs> he cannot stay out of Facebook jail. He accidentally <laughs> drank his pee-pee. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I don't even... All right, look. All right. <clears throat> You know how sometimes I go off a little bit? This is one of those moments, but now I have it's an, amplified. But now I have an accomplice. <laughs> Purely <laughs> amplified that. We're never gonna get on straight with the target topic here. We're gonna get lost. But who needs that sometimes? <clears throat> right. Life it's, is it's, hot enough. It's nice just to be on a porch. True. Drink a tea. Or well, vitamin water. Hey, when there's not a lot of bugs biting at me, you must have like a bug repellent light bulb. Oh, so a couple of weeks ago, as everybody out there knows, um, I was dealing with ticks out front. Oh, yeah, I remember. So I bought this stuff at the store, and they was like, hey, just be careful with this stuff. And I'm like, well, how bad can it be? I bought it at a store, you know, like Walmart. Yeah. And I'm like, we, they're not going to be selling no high-grade, you know, like government <laughs> stuff, the stuff that leaves, like, chemtrails and all that. It's Agent Orange. Right? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me tell you. I go out front and I spray. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to make sure. I was like a Ghostbuster with the proton packs. I was all over the place, okay? So then I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, the ticks are probably in the tree. They're probably in the tree. You spray the tree? So I sprayed the tree, not this one, the one out front. Did you kill the tree? I'm pretty sure I killed every bird that ever lived in it, though, because Bidu Bidu only just came back yesterday. Oh, okay. He had to evacuate for a few days. But anyway, I'm pretty sure that the mist and the breeze of all of the chemicals came back here, so now even the mosquitoes is like, no, not today. Yeah, who sure. knows? Maybe in a few months you'll grow a fourth ear. They. Nobody even knows about your third one, right? Nope. <laughs> not till now. Oops. <laughs> My bad. And we thought Marky Tutos had a bad nickname. Oh. Now I'm going to be Guy on Porch three years. <laughs> the hell? Well, just so you know, that means I can hear you just as good as when you tried to come to my house. So easy. It's like Dolby surround sound. That's right. Going right around your head. There's a reason I don't ever let you <clears> see <throat> the back of this dome. Okay? See, it reminds me of that, that scene in that movie. That you'd, like, you'd like techno music if you had robot ears. Grandma's boy. Yeah! Yes! Grandma's boy. 
I love that movie. Andrea knows that one. Andrea hey, that one. Andrea, your wife? Yeah. How's she doing? Like, she's fucking spectacular, dude. Is she? I love her to death. She is. You know, she was just dealing with her own bullcrap. You know? Yeah. Like, she, well, she she, she has been. she has Lyme disease, right? She has Lyme disease. She, she's got a. She litany. she is a. How does her doctor always say? You're a mystery to me. Yeah. Like, what the hell are we paying you for? You're her doctor. Get for something. He's a mystery. I've I've called more crap than he had. I, I've been right on more crap than he had. And then he takes the credit for it. Because I go into her doctor appointments with him. And he sits there and he takes credit for everything I say. I think the, the psoriasis is the root of your problem. That's what I said 17 years ago when I fucking met her, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, we, we've been trying to establish this stuff for years. But, you know, it's it's gotten better. I mean, she just dealt with that little, I mean... God bless us, man. I mean, I went through what we're here to talk about back in 2015, and now she just got done having a tumor in, in, in her bladder that she had removed. I mean, thank God it was benign and everything's good, but, you know, it was a, a lot of stuff, man. Just taking in a whole lot. You're getting older. I'm, I'm going to be 44, I think. Yeah, well, soon. <laughs> We were just talking about that. Yeah. And that's not that's not even anything. That's just old age. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, she's good. Kids are good. Jasmine's market buying a house. If anybody knows of any homes for sale, please reach out. Um, dude, I'm shameless plugging all this. Hey, <laughs> the guy on the couch is about to make money. Couch. <laughs> Poor Jesus. Dude, sorry. The guy. We've the got we've got a spinoff in the works that just got blown. <laughs> we can't do that. They remember that was the guy in the. Uh, Oh, half bait. Yeah, guy had to come. Hey. He only got up once and told a story uh, and went back to sleep. It'll be a different version. All right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure their trademark probably expired by now. That movie's a little older. You'll, you'll be awake. Yeah. yeah. This guy slept through the whole damn flick. For but sure. I'll lay there the whole time just complaining at people. That's right. <laughs> That'll be what I do. But um, how old are you girls? Oh, God. 23 and 12. Oh, man. What a spread. That is a spread. I was hoping for a boy and God. Thought it would be funny to give me another girl. Now I'm surrounded by estrogen and tampons. Terrible. It's all right. right. <laughs> remember, hey, gentlemen, remember when I was saying that it could always be worse? I'm just saying. I don't know how I would do. I don't think <laughs> See, I would be successful. You got you got Z in there. He, mm. You know. Mm, he's a little sensitive. Still. You're saying he's a little feminine. Uh, right? He's a little. Nothing wrong with that. I'm days. just saying he's Listen. a little. He's a little feminine still. Right, that I mean, we're waiting for the bolas to hit their mark. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Dissension. Yes, okay. you know what I mean. You know. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm still waiting. You know, don't let him be patient because one day he'll grow up, he'll fall in love, he'll get married, and then they'll take those bolas. So you know, I lost mine years ago. I, you know, I've been. But married you still long function. Time. I, I do. I function quite well. There's some hiccups here and there, but, you know, without the ball, I was, I mean, the wife holds them. If I ever want them back, I, I'm sure I could ask. <laughs> Good luck. Honey. Good luck. <laughs> I, I don't need them. <clears throat> I don't need them. You're in a good place, though. Who needs them? I am very happy. I'm glad. I always try to be. Even, even in and out of Facebook jail. I think that's what makes me happier is because I'm not dealing with all the idiots on Facebook. No, no offense. I'm just saying. Listen, the people who get offended by everything I say. You know. Oh, my God. You know the peoples we're talking about on that Facebook. The peoples that are like, guy on porch, you should not be smoking in your videos. Listen, listen. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, there's a reason I don't put the little red circle thingy no more. Because I'm certain, certainly not in the business of appeasing anymore. I just want people to be happy with their lives, not judge mine. What happened? Like, when we were young, this... Like, oh, people man. weren't offended by everything. No, they were, but they knew to keep it to themselves. Because it's their thing. Do you know what I'm saying? See, I, don't, I, I mean, yeah, I get it, but it just seems weird. Like, you could say shit back in the day that right now, if I said it, everybody out there would be... You know, searching for my place of employment and, you know, oh, yeah. ruining my life. And all I did was... I mean, Damn, that's no jokes. Because I see this one guy on the TikToks. And he used to be in some form of the military. And this guy, some dude was talking trash to him on his TikToks. This is no, this is no bullshit. And he literally, two days later, made a post on TikToks. 
running this guy's whole personal information Ish. on the TikToks and was like, this is what this guy said. This is where he worked, where he lives. Obviously, he didn't give the address, but yeah, all that business. You know what that tells me? There's a lot of freaking people out there who ain't got enough to do. And let me tell you, there's plenty of jobs hiring. There's true. plenty of work out there. That is got true. all this time to sit on social media and worry about all these other people and do the research through court documents and all that other stuff. And sure, you could say, well, it didn't take me no time at all. But you know what? It didn't have to take any time at all. Exactly. Like, what's the purpose of all that? You want to get at somebody, but you're afraid. I mean, back in the day, if we were mad at somebody and we wanted to deal with it, you know what we did? We went to their house and we kicked their ass. Or we went to their house and we got our ass kicked and we learned, oh shit, he's right, I'm a pussy. <laughs> you know, that's how it went down. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I learned my lesson, you know? It's it's a whole different world, man. You know, we grew up in a whole different time and we used to kick each other's ass. You know, we we beat the crap out of each other just wrestling and it made us all tougher over that shit. That's that's what I was saying in yesterday's video when I was talking about uh I was talking about being a parent and how everything I've ever done, right? I did the military and I am a brother and I am a son and you know what I mean? I'm all of these things, right? right. But the scariest thing I do is be a parent. <clears throat> and yeah, I was telling them the reason that I feel that way is I have, I am a pivotal part of what is forming someone who has to deal with this world which is only getting worse i am a pivotal part of what successes they will have right. and that to me is the greatest responsibility and pressures that could ever exist do you know what i'm saying 100 percent. i mean i know I, i'm there it's you know you get to a point that your, your kids are young yet you know you know you got a long time when you rip up their heads over socks because they're freaking cheap walk hey yeah, hey not knocking them hold on keep your train of thought Keep your train of thought. You said what he just said about his socks? I gotta do it. I was bored today and I was in a hurry. Yeah. That's that's what's going on in this shoe, okay? Look. Yeah, that's what's going on in this shoe. I ain't gonna leave my man hanging out to dry talking about his socks. That's that's yeah. Um Yeah. That's one thing I can't do anymore. The socks gotta work, man. My feet are very important. So I gotta keep them very. Safe. Oh, what what is that? There's a movie that reminds me of, where he's like all about his feet, and he's like, I even brought three pairs of socks because he's like I have to change them at least twice a day. Oh man, I'm gonna remember it after this. Yeah, That's you, how this works. You got me on that one. I'm gonna remember it, and then I'm gonna shout it out in one of the next episodes. But anyway, yeah. so let's get to the heart of the matter right now. All right. <laughs> Let's 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 just get to it, cause we have the whole video to be ourselves. But I, I <laughs> you're gonna be here all night of that. It's Friday. <laughs> but I do I do before we we get too off the rails. <clears throat> I want the biggest reason, obviously, uh, other than being able to spend time, because we don't get to do that very often, with life being what it is. Right. <clears throat> I would like. If you could just, whatever you're comfortable with, just walk the people through kind of what you went through back in 2015, kind of the, the mindset and uh, just some of the feelings, if you if you will. Just give them what you're going to give them. But I want people to know that where there is a will, there is a way. And you're proof in the puddings. Yeah. Oh, my God, certainly. Dude. I mean, you know, you were, you were around. You, you watched it on Facebook most of my time. But, you know, it, like you said 2015... When it all started, dude, I'm just sitting there, you know, it just started at the beginning. I'm sitting there, I start getting these weird heartbeat things. You know, it felt like there was actually a bass drum in my chest, and Tommy Lee is back there pounding away. You know, I'd feel my body just moving like this, and, and not that dramatically, but, you know, and it's, it, it started to get to me. Okay, I'm getting older, I could be starting to have heart problems. I smoked a lot, dude. I smoked from the time I was like, 17, 18. It's the weirdest shit, man. I grew up around my mom and everybody else smoking. I hated cigarettes. I couldn't stand it. it. Made me sick. And then there I am, you know, smoking all them years. But I figured it'd be a hard thing. So we go into the hospital and 
they take an x-ray and a CT and they come back in. They were looking for things like Marfan syndrome and different stuff like that. And uh, he said, we didn't find anything like this, but there is a tumor in your chest. And I said, what? You know, in my lungs? No, it's in your chest. And it's right dead center between the lungs behind the heart. And, uh, you know, you, you froze up. Cause you know right away what it is man i mean there's no uh, oh it could just be a pimple or it could just be a, a right, sore right. a sore thumb or no it's a tumor dude you got cancer and you're about to have your entire life changed in the blink of an eye and that's the stuff that was going through my head at that time but you know you go home you wait for the appointment to go up and get the biopsy and everything and um kind of just try to stay motivated and you know at least just be happy and go until you find out everything you know my my only goal right then and there was okay let's get the biopsy done let's find out what it is what we got to do to get it what are my options well the first biopsy they went and threw a tube in my mouth they didn't cut me open or anything uh pulled it out they couldn't get a sample a, a good sample everything was dead which didn't make sense because cancer is a live cell uh second time they had to go in through the neck and um, pulled every pulled what they needed out kind of glued me up and sent me home um, this is this will start getting deep so I hope you don't got time you better too <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm good to go. I went uh, I went with the wife it was like Valentine's Day you know I'm, I'm still freshly glued up so two days later you know I was doing some things I felt okay and we went down to Lidditz. We were going to go to the Fire and Ice Festival. It was cold, but, you know, we had a hotel right there. We stayed at the one Hampton Inn or something right there on the road. And we're down there, and I just didn't feel good. You know, I felt horrible. My, my neck hurt. Everything just kind of... So we spent all the time in the room, just kind of slept, went home the next day, and uh, got unpacked, spent the day home, and just kept felt sicker and sicker. I just really didn't want to do anything. Um, I didn't even notice the whole time that I'm starting to swell in there, you know, where my incision was and stuff. And, um, we fell asleep on the couch. It's like four inches of snow outside. And I wake up and I smell this horrible putrid scent, like, dude, like rotten milk and sewage just right in front of my face. I sat up and I felt fluid coming down. And I looked here and I felt that everything came open and I was rushed to her. She met like it was nothing. Um, turns out there was all kinds of infection in there. There was like three multiple infections. I spent about five days in ICU, um, which was a terrible start to this whole process to begin with. You're in ICU, you don't have family, there's no friends, you can get a phone call. And for most of the day I sat there just juiced up on antibiotics and uh, just lethargic dude everything kind of healed up and through that time the doctors came in they started explaining to me what they found with this tumor and um, the tumor was actually growing around one of my vessels over here and it shut it down it cut it off like 50% and that's why my heart was beating so hard so not only am I at like I think it was like late stage 3 cancer and I got a tumor growing around my vessel threatening to shut off my blood circulation there's not a lot of options so they laid it out to me they told me what they needed to do was a uh, R chop which was a pretty common um, to be honest with you the whole the cancer itself is very common in people my age which blows my mind because I don't hear people 30s and 40s going oh, I got cancer you know a little bit more nowadays which is really odd but regardless it, it wasn't something you thought about and he says it's very common the form of cancer where you have it is not uh, tumors don't usually grow in the chest it's not Hodgkin's diffuse large B cell it's usually lymph lymphoma affecting cancer um, bone cancer it, it affects all that uh, so I learned all this while I'm in there you know I, I have no alternatives that was one thing I wanted to know is there anything but chemo well you know you can try something but if that vessel grows any larger it's going to cut everything down so that's all right that's all I got 
you know, it was really hard learning all that and being alone in there. And, you know, this is just kind of a, I remember I was in that room and I opened up my eyes. I think it was like early morning and your sister is standing there. Emma comes in the room and is like, violating all protocols. Don't go into the infected guy's room and shit. And she comes in and she starts talking to me. She went out for about 15 minutes or so. She, I think she just got done with her shit. She heard I was in there, so props. <laughs> but I got out of there. Everything kind of just flew into place real quick. You know, it was a matter of you're going to take six hits of chemo and you're going to do about 17 hits of radiation to get this through. And um, say that again six chemo shots or six rounds of chemo, basically, and then 17 shots of chemo. Man. Uh, I mean, radiation. I'm sorry, 17 hits of radiation, six rounds of chemo. And, uh, you know, somebody told, and, and this is kind of what you, you alluded to, is the whole stay and be, and, you know, somebody, I forget who it was, one of my buddies asked me, you know, what, what are you going to do now? And after knowing everything that I had to do and everything that I had to look forward to, you know, a 95% success rate in that chemo um, with very little chance of relapse, I mean, what do you want me to do? say oh I quit yeah, you can't do that bro. you can't do that that's you gotta look at it and understand that you could just die taking the chemotherapy the chemo itself could potentially kill you you know there's there's a lot of risk nobody knows what's gonna happen to your body when you're injecting radioactive material into it and killing every cell that it comes in contact with not just the bad ones but every you know it's you could die I don't want to look at it as I'm going to die. I want to look at it as I'm going to survive. I'm going to carry on. And this is all going to just be a bad dream. That's staying me was just, I'm just staying who I am. You know, I'm not changing anything about what I'm doing. You know, I got a family to take care of. I got a job that I love. I got family and friends that, you know, as much as some people really like to say they don't like me too much, they really do deep down inside of it loves me and I know <laughs> we just hey. gotta accept that hey <laughs> yeah I'm, uh, you ain't gonna get no argument from me um but it was it was crazy man it was the worst thing I've ever endured ever I mean the first few weeks um, actually the first few months man it took a few months to do everything but it was right around Easter when I finally got to my I think it was my getting close to my third round of chemo and you know everybody's big thing is they're gonna shave their head and I let mine go you know why because I knew at some point in time it was gonna be really funny to see some healthy looking dude just standing there ripping his own fucking hair out of his head <laughs> and I was a hundred percent correct because at Easter dinner I had my nieces my nephew and my own kids there and they come in the room and we're like I was like Look what Uncle Brandon can do. And I just yank a shot right out of my head. And by the time dinner was over, oh. everybody was gone. Bro, I, I had these chunks all over my head just missing. And I went upstairs. Andrea's downstairs cleaning up. And she, I took the clippers and I shaved it around. And she comes up. She said, you look like Dr. Phil. Like, can I keep it like this? Is that okay? That's the question. <laughs> she wasn't having it so I literally I had to get rid of it all at that point but you know I held on to it for as long as I could and I, I, I mean, somebody's like you really ripped your hair out of your head it's like what am I gonna do sit there and watch it fall out and cry about it it'll grow back if I survive it will come back I will be fine and now he is like he is like Fabio <laughs> you remember the guy on the novels the novellas? Yes. The guy who had a goose flying in his face on a roller coaster. <laughs> yes. Remember that? Is, what is, is it Fabio? Fabio. 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 That guy. I can't believe it's not butter. Remember but, that commercial? Oh, too? yeah. That guy's so <laughs> fugazi. Ay, ay, ay. What a, what a nerd. Oh, that was so fun. But now you, you are Goldilocks. I, and, again, man, it, as bad as it was, you know, you gotta just wake up every day and repeat that you're waking up. 
I woke up today. The day has already started off exactly how I wanted to. The shit that goes on as you go through the day is either gonna break you or make you. And you know, when when you're even me, and you mentioned something like this earlier when we were talking off air here. You know, you look at some people and you realize they have it so much worse. And even as a cancer patient, a cancer survivor who dealt with terrible, terrible side effects and horrible, horrible misery. There's a tra- too focused on us right now. That train will go by any moment. But well, make sure you talk loud. Like I, like that, I said, that like train said. is going to be. And you know this because you, you're doing it now, and uh, I'm proud of you for everything you're doing. You have to wake up every day, no matter how hard your life is or anything that you're going through, and you have to constantly be grateful just to wake up. You will get through the day. Nothing that you will go through in that day is going to kill you. Yes, there's always that 1 in 14.39 billion chance that something in that day may kill you, but it's 1 in 14.39 billion, and you'll be fine. Um, you heard that, right? It's a close enough number. I'm just going with it. <laughs> but, you, you can't let... And, and I said I, I wanted to treat it like it was all a bad dream. Unless I'm put in a situation to talk about it, which I do not mind at all. I forget I had cancer. I literally forget it was even there because I'm so busy loving the life I have every day and living for what I have and what, I, what, what I'm about to, you know, earn and what I'm striving for as I continue on. There's, there's no reason to remember that. You know, it made me a stronger person, sure. But I don't think anybody would ever have thought that my demeanor and the way I approached this whole thing was any different from anything that I've ever approached before. Yeah, when I was younger, I was kind of miserable and negative. But And, and some people might look at me on Facebook, you're miserable and negative now. No, I just like to troll. Um, I'm pretty happy in life, and I love all of you. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> It's called the weeding out process, okay? <laughs> we get to find out through his posts who's got the thick skins and who, well, let's say our sissy lalas. Yeah. That's my, they're little fugazi. And I'm, and when I say fugazi, I mean sensitives, okay? I don't mean any of the In other every stuff. respectable way, we mean, yeah, you're sensitive. Yeah, that's um, it. It's okay to be sensitive. I have sensitive skin. It's okay. <laughs> I do too, all the time. If we could rub something on y'all and make you a little bit more abrasive and rough, we'd certainly do it. I if, will donate my voice for any of you. If if you have something you're dealing with in your life and you feel like you cannot handle it, let me know what the problem is, what is going on. Look, I have ADD. But anyway, if you got something going, did you see it? He's still there. What is going on? I cannot win. It's a pterodactyl, dude. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> It is like Jurassic Park with the dinosaurs. <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, if any of you got a problem out there, I will be your voice. He will be your voice. I don't care. But I do want to ask you, getting back to it, okay, is I never, without a question, knew that you were going to stay B. All right? Stay and B kind of took on a little life of itself. All right? And I want to touch on that then, but I also want to know something. And if you don't want to, it's fine. But for everything you tell them, like, you know, it was never a question you had to fight. It was never a question that you had to keep going. Right, right. I feel like even the strongest men, now me, me personally, in my darkest times, I knew that there was no question but to fight. But you have those moments alone where mm-hmm. it starts to creep in. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? What, what were some of those like? And, and kind of what did you do to kind of reassert yourself? Or who did you have that... You know, it doesn't take much, man. It doesn't take much. I mean, first and foremost, the most important things in your life, if you have them, are, are your, your children and your family. Everything, everybody that has been uh, instrumental. In or even some friends. And so on. Friends. Yeah. If, if they are instrumental in your life and they, they, they've, you love them and you know that if they were gone, you would die inside. Once you can confirm, okay, that's why I'm, that's why I'm still fighting. You know, because those people need you. Dude. I mean, as as much as, as much as you can say, well, I don't need you. Yeah, I do. 
because now I have somebody who has a video every day I can watch and get a kick out of it. But in the same time, I can understand what, what you're dealing with. And, you know, in the same sense, you're sharing your way of expressing yourself with others who can now, okay, maybe it's not so bad I can open up and talk about things and I really should because they see you and I'm sitting here with you. I mean, obviously people what's in this cup, it's fucking vitamin water. You're doing what you need to do, dude. You're doing it the right way. And that's, you know, you said it earlier, your kids are important. That, that's all that matters. You know, everybody else comes second, but they're still as valuable. You know, there's no reason to believe that being, well, I'm your fourth best friend. Dude, you're still valuable. No matter what any, agreed. what position agreed. you come in, you are still valuable and instrumental. It's the people that are like 78th in line and you never talk to anymore that you say, yeah, I love you, but you know damn well they're talking crap behind your back every other minute they get. And that's why they're in the position they're in, but you still love them because they're people. And I want to and I want to touch on that for something real quick. Um, <laughs> um, the big thing is is with that. I also want to touch out there because there's a lot of people that uh, I I've come in contact with over the years that that dropped. Uh, when I say to them, you're never alone. You got family. You got this. You have that. I don't have family. I don't have. I don't have. You do though. I promise you. You might not think that you have anybody out there that you are close enough to to divulge there's this stigma in life around being an adult and being able to be vulnerable or to ask for help okay that stigma is what i aim to ease for you that is what he is here for i want it to be sh i want there to i want there to be a vulnerability only because of one reason it is keeping it inside it is not turning to anybody it is manifesting all of these things inside of you i promise you that is doing more harm than anything else that you could possibly do in your life i could have picked up the bottle a hundred million times but by not talking to somebody about the things that i was going through that was worse for me than even the drinking was and i promise you that because it's when you get those things addressed when you come to grips with those things in your life everything else is possible i promise you if he if he would have kept it all to himself, if he did not have his wife, his children, the many friends, the many friends that just the undying support that yeah. was there. I did you Mr. Miyagi? I Mr. Miyagi that shit. Wax on, wax off. There's that's another one. that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um all right, so with the how long how long did the treatment take then? Oh, um, the chemo was six months. It sucked so bad because my very last chemo treatment, I showed up and I had a fever. So they sent me home. They said I had to wait a few weeks. I was miffed, but no, nah, man, the, the last day. By the way. Um, yeah, I bet you have video of it, don't you? What we're going to do is, is at this very moment, I am going to insert video of uh, Brandon here. The, the last day. Ringing the bell. Dude, it was so good. It was so good. Oh, God. I'm getting Woo! more friends. Howdy. Okay. <laughs> Stay in B. Cool. <laughs> okay, I'm finally finished with chemo. I want to thank everybody out there in Facebook for supporting me, all my family, all my friends. Everybody who's been there every step of the way. I would like to thank all of these lovely nurses and all the staff here at Hershey <laughs> for helping and being so kind and compassionate and choosing the job they do and helping people like me and others to get through this. So today I get to ring the bell. This is for everybody. Denny Albright, keep pushing, man. I love you. Hope everything's okay. And this is for my grandmother who's been with me in spirit the whole way. So tell me about that. I was just, I was happy to be gone. I mean, I, I was done, you know? And, you know, I, I gave a shout out to my grandmother. I mean, most people knew my grandmother passed away with uh, her own cancer battles like a year and a half prior to me finding out that I had cancer. Um, one of the, um, you're 
good. You're good. I actually bought her a jacket. She fought that woman, dude. She fought breast cancer and won. She fought stage four lung cancer and won. And only finally had to give up at when it hit brain and bone. And after her breast cancer battle, I bought her a Susan G. Komen um, jacket. It was white and it had the little pink boxing gloves on it on the bottom. It said, fight like a girl. I mean, it was a windbreaker. And my 70 year old grandmother probably wasn't gonna wear it because it was kind of hip. And she's an old Dutch lady, so it wasn't working. There. But um, she, she, you know, she was happy to have it. I like, kept her warm. You know, she was laying in her bed. I managed to be able to salvage that from everything and keep it, and I wore it. I took it with me to every chemo, and ringing that bell was dedicated it to her because I know she her strength and what she endured is what that's the bloodline you know that's that's in all of my family at least me I don't know about the other ones uh but <laughs> love you <laughs> hi mom um she was such an inspiration just to fight like that man I mean it's I still have the jacket I'm never giving that up I've worn it um you know, they had the cancer day out at, out at work when we were at the offices. He had them, you know, you wore something pink to honor. And I, I wore that thing proudly. <laughs> I mean, it's a girl's jacket. I don't care. I don't care. I will fight like a girl just like my grandmother did if that's what it takes, man. But, you know, the, the chemotherapy was harsh. Um, the radiation was really... Every other day or every day for like 17 days straight you know you leave work you go up to Hershey you get this weird green net mask wrapped around you they strap you down to the table and they put you under the laser beam and pew, done go home <sighs> I drive all the way up here every day for seven seconds <laughs> you couldn't have sent me somewhere else like 11 and just to do this you know but I, I liked Hershey Hershey did a great job Big ups. he talked about a lot of stuff <laughs> lots Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. I, uh, I really, really appreciate you coming and being the first sit-down person with me. I appreciate it. You're the first? You are the first sit-down person to actually do, like, a whole one of these. Like, my brother was, like, an interview, more, lo more or less. Right. But you and I are just vibing. Yeah. This is, this is what, I mean, this is the vibe you get. You're on a porch. Now you're bringing people over to hang out on the porch. And that's yeah. just what it is. Glad I came. This was awesome. You know, even even if it's, I don't know. I'm going to come out and hang out on your porch more often. It's, I, it is my, uh. We should do way more videos. We should invite more people. Absolutely. You know, like a fire gone and just. Oh, fire time tales. You know, like, it, it's like a. It's like an updated 2021 version of masculinity coming along to share its emotional side. A bunch of dudes just sitting around talking, drinking some teas and lovely vitamin water. <clears throat> here. Just so you know, I am a little wild, though, because it's the triple X kind. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's not what he means. Yeah, I know what triple X means. <laughs> <laughs> Get your minds out of the gut, you <laughs> Dirty. Mess. You're all dirty. Look at them. They're all over there, like. Drilling. And just so you know, I have gasoline. <laughs> you do have gasoline and your cornbread stuffing, because I know how much this stuff is. You know, it brings back memories. Mm. We used to. Mm. You feed the ducks. Do you have ducks? Mm. Yeah, you do, because we just watched them fly over. <laughs> those were geeses. No, those were ducks. They sounded. They were ducks. We were, were talking about duck hunts. Oh, they were ducks. Jesus. Oh God. my God. <laughs> geeses. Geeses. <laughs> Look at the mice over there. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, See this? I signed up for this. You did. You invited me over. And That's all right. It was going to get out of control as it is. <clears> but Sorry to take up so much of your time, folks. I know this is going to be a long one, but it I is. Had fun. It's exactly. Look, the running gag at this point is if you don't know, now you know because I always say this one's going to be a shorter one. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I have missed the mark on that one. And what's even funnier is, is early we was talking about if he watches the videos, like how much he watches them. I gave up. <laughs> it's and like, he was you like, go an hour, dude. It's a little bit long. You and know, he was like, like, he says to me, he goes, yeah, you know, I try to sit sit down and watch a little bit. He's like, but you have those ones where you, you know, you kind of go for like 45 minutes. <laughs> He's like, and then I'm like, David, I got to go. Yeah. See, those moments, though, you're all alone. Now you're here, and, and going beyond 40 minutes is acceptable. Expect, it's expected and yeah. acceptable. I mean, two guys who don't hang out that often, who know each other since, you know, Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Right? You, know, you don't know who that is? You don't know who that is? We had the original Transformers. Y'all don't know what you're doing. These kids with these little toys nowadays. Pfft. Yeah, you all that plastic stuff. We had the real die cast metal that we'd smack across each other's faces when they're pissed off. You don't... I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know nothing until you've played with wrestlers that are made of pure rubber, and those hurt too. Were horrible. We hit the hit. Ow. It, they were horrible. It was it was literally like taking a mallet to someone. I miss those things. But they were awesome. We had a bunch of them. We'd always bring each other you know, our toys to the to the other person's house, and we'd sit there. And, I got my team over here, the Ultimate Warrior. And <laughs> the, the, what was it? The Killer Bees, jumping oh, the, Jim Brunzel, yeah. and B. Brian Blair, Tito Santana, and Tito, Rick Martel. Rick Martel. Paul they, Orndorff, Mister oh Wonder. You know what I just watched the other night. I watched the biography on Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Dude, he was a, he was like the sh He was ahead of his time. He really was. He was Rowdy. He yeah. was very Rowdy. He was ahead of his time. We met him once at an ECW event, I think, years and years ago. I remember when ECW first came to London, when it was first like emerging, dude. It was like the hip thing. And it was great. I miss wrestling. I don't watch it. Uh, my son. My son, he's into it. And you know, with my dad. And you yeah. know you growing up and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Well, we used to, there's there's my kids. If you haven't heard that, I forgot to close the door. We used to go to my grandfather's. Man, we'd turn on Prism on a Saturday night. He'd cut up the bologna and cheese, and we'd all sit there and watch like the Saturday Night Main Event. It was really cool. And now it is what it is. Saturday Night Main Event now at my house is sitting up in the room at 10 p.m. playing one of them stupid puzzle games on my Samsung phone listening to my wife worry about wedding dresses for my daughter's wedding. That's Saturday night's main event. But at least you don't have that. Do you oh, really want to talk about wedding dresses? No. Me neither. I'm happy over here. I love you, honey. I'll be home soon to talk about wedding dresses. <laughs> mm, I don't want any parts of... Look, I feel like as if it's I... It's coming one day, brother. You got a little girl in there. You're going to have to deal with it at some point. She also has her mother and we are not together so the wedding park can stay at one house no he got it the only it. thing i will be responsible for is the walking of the aisle <laughs> that is it <laughs> that is absolutely it and if i mess that junk up i'm drinking again that's what happens <laughs> i'm gonna tell her to invite me so i can keep you from doing that as if, soon as i see you like so we could go for a drink i think i screwed it all up <laughs> <laughs> you find one of those old rubber wrestlers and throw it right at your head. <laughs> you standing there up at the priest saying, Anybody who, who feels it, hold on. David! <laughs> Sit your ass down. Get George Animal Steel flying at your skull. That was the, he was awesome too. He was a big round one. But anyway. All right. You got to close it up. The I porch do. Is, the porch is closing. I do have to close this up. But listen, thank you for being here. I appreciate it so much and i hope that you come over and we can do this we got it we um, just gotta do some random things we don't always have to come over and share emotions we can entertain the people because we can certainly do that oh my god <laughs> hey listen if you guys have a minute in your day a second i don't care what it is find someone you love someone you care about or just someone you're thinking about and let them know that you're thinking about them let them know that you love them let them know that you care it could be the difference in someone's day. It could be the difference in someone's life. It could just be that one thing that you're they're looking for, you know, to hold on to, to make that difference and, and maybe head a different path. Um, it's paramount to me that you guys understand that 
there are so many stories out there that are unheard and we get caught up every single day in living life and we think that we're alone. We think that we have it as bad as it can get and that is just the furthest thing from the truth. <clears throat> you always have people out there that care, whether it's me, whether it's people like Brandon, we're, we're an ear, we will listen, you know? We could be the sage old man, we could be the sage old man with advice, or we could just, you know, be the crack up that you need. But please do something kind for someone today. I don't care what it is. Um, and that leaves that leaves me to just wish you guys a good day, uh, a blessed day, and most importantly, an inspirational day. <laughs> Peace out. Inspirational. Yes, I mean.